Welcome to Watchdog Wargaming. Today's painting tutorial is a North Vietnamese soldier from Vietnam in 1967. Uh, this um, one actually painting, this is a finished one. This is a, a 3D breed, um, 3D resin print of a um, MBA uh, NCO, which I've already painted up. So hopefully by following this guide, it, your figure will look like something like this. Right, off we go. So with most figures, um, this is the figure I'm actually using. So uh, with most figures, I look at the model first uh, to see what, what is actually, um, if there's going to be any issues on there, any difficulties getting the brush into certain areas. Um, so normally I start painting sort of uh, in, inside out. So in this case, it'll be, I'm looking around here now, um, normally, if you have a weapon ac across the chest, you can have, it's going to be difficult to paint the web in. But in this case, the, the, the rifle or the AK-47 is actually open. Chest area is actually uh, well open, so I can get my brush in there. And it doesn't seem to be um, any tight spaces. So this is what you seem to need, you need to do before you start painting. Is have a little appreciation of your figure just to see if where you're going to have any problems. And it might be worthwhile just starting in those problem areas first. So what I'm going to be doing is starting off with the face and also the uh, the back of the hair as well. So so if I make a, any paint splodge, splodges anywhere else, the paint I'm going to put on on the scarf or actually on the back of the rucksack, you'll probably cover up any uh, issues that I have. So um, let's uh, start off with the paint. So um, my my go-to for uh, sort of uh, Asian um, type characters is um, Valerio's U.S. Tan Earth. Uh, I'll put the details on it as we go along. Um, it sounds like a strange paint to start off with, but it, it's it's perfect for uh, for what we need. And then sort of the the hair. Um, I've just said just a, a normal black. In this case, uh, it'll be the um, Citadel um, Aberdeen black. Right, so let me just get the paints out. Make sure you give them a good shake before you use them. So that's the uh, US Tan Earth, which I'll be using for the um, for the skin, and then just for the black, uh, Citadel black, Aberdeen black for uh, the, the hair. Just put a little bit of uh, the, the tan earth on my uh, palette again, um, and and then match it up with a little bit of water. So I just want it not straight from the pot, but it, uh, it's where it's a little bit it's, it's a little bit watery because you don't want it too thick. It's, it's uh, easier to do a, a, a number of um, uh, sort of go with it once or twice. We're actually about painting it once and uh, taking away all the detail. So let's start off with the the face. So let's get in, get right in there. So one to the ears back of the neck under the under the chin top of the chest and then I will also do the the arms hands so I'm just splodging the areas where I'm going to paint and then what I'll do is put on pause and then sort of uh, uh, cover those uh, uh, fellows areas properly and then one thing's one I say you're looking at your appreciation of your, of your figure so this one is actually got rolled up trousers so there's between his uh, 
top of it, the bottom of his trousers and his boot, there's actually a fleshy area as well. Because there's nothing worse than actually painting your figure and then realizing you've left a certain, you've, you've left a point, uh, something out. So, you know, I'm not being careful. I can, you know, try and be careful as possible. But if it's, it's if it goes over at this point, it's not a uh, game over. So that's. What I'll do is give these another two thin coats, cover over the area, and then we'll come back. So once you've uh, painted the, the arms, the face, the, the chin, the top of the chest area, and in this case, the um, around the ankles uh, with tan earth, uh, you should sort of be kept, um, have a figure that looks like like this. And uh, because I sprayed it with the, the light gray paint, it did um, I did take about three um, light coats to uh, cover it fully where the gray wasn't actually coming through. But I'm quite happy to work where it is. I did have a, an explosion with my uh, black paint when I was doing the back of the neck. But at, at this stage, I'm not particularly worried because it can be tidied up or just painted over. But it's just to say it's there. The black paint was just to do the hair at the back of the uh, back of the neck. Uh, it's just got, this just goes to show that if you do the sort of everything on the outside of the uniform first before you do the um, uh, and then go to do the neck area, this is potentially what could happen. So sometimes you know, let's have a look at your figures and uh, and work from um, inside out. Okay, so um, what I'm probably going to do now is we're going to look at the uh, start on the the head the headwear. Um, in this case, is, this has got the uh, the helmet. So what I'm going to be using is an olive green. Um, again, this is Valerio paint, and I put all the de details on there. If you look on it, there ha there is a band going around it, and right at the very front, there's a, a little round um, area which is um, where the um, like cat badge goes, and it's just basically it's a red star. So uh, um, any red that you have that's uh, quite bright, um, that's what I, I'll use. Um, we'll just I'll see what I've got uh, available. Uh, and then sort of, uh, but yeah, and you might get some uh, figures that have actually got um, a helmet cover. So the uh, the helmet cover, um, I suggest, is that you use the um, uh, the canvas um, color. And that's, uh, again, I put the details on that as well. Valerius canvas. Okay. Like I said, I'll be using the um, olive green for the actual helmet itself, but if uh, and also then canvas for the um, helmet cover. So um, this is actually a figure that I painted earlier, uh, and if you look, that it's got the the actual helmet cover on it, which I've painted in in in, in the canvas colour. Let's see if I can get a nice. There we are. A oh, bit of a toothy grin on there, but that's the that's the that's the the helmet cover once you've once you've, you've shaded it afterwards. Okay, so I hope that's been of some use. Right, so um, like with most of these paints, just make sure you give them a good shake, and then we'll uh, start on the um, the helmet. Okay, so uh, let, let's get, uh, crack on with the the actual helmet itself. Using the olive green from Valerio, the red I've got um, is just random red I've got in my collection, um, and this one's an army painter, um, a dragon red, which is perfect for it. So again, we don't want tons of tons of paint on the brush, uh, and, but we ju just want to make it into a sort of like a milky color. This particular brush is just a bog standard uh, Citadel starter brush, which came out of a, a magazine that I had recently. So you know you don't need um, you don't need all these really expensive uh, brushes to actually do a, a you know good, a good job. One paint what, what I'm going to be painting is actually you know it's battlefield standard it's not going to be flash or anything like that but it's it, it'll be uh, good for what I um, what I need on the battlefield and uh, I am a bit of a slow painter but uh, there we are now also as well do is don't forget to paint actually underneath it as well or you could leave it in a shadow um, what I'm going to do is, is is I'll paint the top and then paint underneath the um, underneath the helm uh, the hat the helmet as well um, and then so if I do make any mistakes because I've still got a little bit of the um, 
the dark, uh, the tan earth on my palette, I can just tidy up any mistakes I've made. So whilst I'm waiting for the uh, green um, to dry on the helmet, what, and I've got the red out, what I'll do is actually uh, start on the scarf itself. So um, again, it depends on what uh, what, um, what red you've got. Just make sure you do wash your uh, your, your brush out uh, completely before changing from green to red. Otherwise, you'll end up with an interesting colour. And then sort of. Uh, carefully go around the um, scarf area around the, uh, the, the neck. Um, as I said, it's, you can be a little bit careful, more careful on this this time, um, but um, especially around the back of the neck, but that's because we've still got some of the uh, the starting colours. If you, if you do go over, you know, not to worry, just let it dry and uh, then just then paint over it. And once you've uh, finished the red scarf, don't forget to uh, do what you actually got the red out for in the first place. And by this time, the, the helmet should be dry. And just get a little bit of red on your brush. And then look for where that little star is. And that's all you need. That's just to say, just to emphasize the red star on there as well. Now, with the scarves as well, is that... Um, I'm not sure 100% sure of what the um, specifics of the scarves are. However, the pictures that I've got, which I represent this MVA of, has got a red scarf on. But um, but what I'm doing is my uh, Viet Cong have actually got white uh, white scarves on, and my MVA have got red scarves on. So on the battlefield, I can see straight away with who's a who's, which is which is useful. But you can actually also use blue blue scarves as well, which uh, I think I've got white spots on them as well. But there we are. So um, that's the um, that's the scarf and the actual red star. And to say, but it's 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 coming along nicely at the moment. Um, so what we're going to move on to next is um, what I'm going to go on to next is probably uh, let's do the uniform next. Let's do the uniform next. So that's um, so I'm doing. The post 1967 um, uniform, which is the uh, the all sort of like the, the green sort of that we're used uh, used to seeing with like with modern military uniforms. So that's the, and I'll be using the Russian green, which is uh, 70894, which I'll again I'll put all the details below. Um, I have uh, used um, for the lighter colour, so the khaki colour that you sometimes see um, is I've I've used the Japanese uniform, which is a 70 nine two three um, but you can actually use um, uh, German camo beige as well again that gives you a nice nice um, uh, a nice uniform effect so okay okay as I said we, I use Russian green for the for the uniform and that's for the uh, point post uh, 1967 uniform so uh, again ch quick wash the brush um, just make sure there's no the previous paint in there uh, and give it a good shake and, and just put some on my uh, palette here. Let's have a look. I just wanted a little bit milky, not too thick and not too watery. So um, let's have a look at a quick look on, on there. So we've got uh, we've got the, the legs to do. Don't forget the folds on the trousers. Um, Again, when you're looking at these, uh, so he's got the shirt that comes down. Uh, he's not wearing any um, body armor, which is good because sometimes body armor is tucked in. All the uniforms are tucked in under the body armor, so we've got the, the the sleeves under there as well. I am making sure that there are some straps that are coming down for the chest rig, so we'll look at those uh, um, in a minute. But um, I'm going to be careful when I paint around those areas. So it's around here as well, in there as well, but there is a ch the chest rig strap over the back. Um, under here as well, don't forget under the crotch area, all around here. All right, so um, what I normally do is I say it's I do these in a batch of 10. So whilst I'm painting on one and, and uh, moving on to the next, they, they all dry. So when I've finished the first one, 
back to the first one is usually everything I'm doing is dried so it's uh, I do it in sort of like a conveyor belt okay so I'll just put that on pause a second just finish off those areas and then you can see what I've done so far so once you've done all the uh, Russian green on the trousers and the shirt and the arms as I said the other certain areas I had to be make sure I had, uh, I had to put some paint into there as well so because there was a gap with the shirt was shown so these are little sort of sort of things that you need to look at when you're doing your figures um, yeah I did go over the slightly um, up at the top here so I had to paint the red again uh, which is fine again it's, it's still on my palette and um, down on the trousers here I touched on the legs so again I still, still got a little bit, a bit of tan down there which I've done so that's um, that's the uh, the uniform um, part of it now so what I'm going to be going on to next is the um, the chest rig um, some of these figures well you either have a chest rig or you will actually have it looks like a bandolier goes around the front uh, and that's like individual pouches for the SKS so it's the same material uh, just a different design but this is for the, for the AK-47 chest rig okay so uh, now I'm going to go into the chest rig um, so I'll be using the uh, Valerio uh, green grey um, 886 so I'll um, put all the details on that again so what the areas I'll be looking at is the uh, the front pouches for the magazines and then the side pouches where the grenades were as well uh, and the shoulder straps and that's what we'll do at the moment okay we'll concentrate on the other things um, Bergen different color um, shovel a different color and also the water bottle was a different color but so we'll just start on the um, on the chest rig So, like I says, uh, we'll be doing on there, there, there. This is a, a bit of a light colour, but don't be sort of uh, concerned about it. When we've got some shading on it, it all it all blend in nicely. Right. And there we are. That's the the chest rig done. Like I says, it's it'll dry a little uh, dry a little bit darker, but not so worry about because when we put shade on it, it, it will actually make it um, a, a lot darker. Um, yeah, um, just be careful when you put the, the straps on because sometimes the, the straps for the chest rig may sort of overlap the chap, uh, the straps for the rucksack. So it's better to have some paint on either or, uh, and then to see you can just tidy it up later on. But um, so that's that's the that's sort of the, the the chest rig. I've just put on with the, uh, the grey green, and now what I'm going to go on to is the actual. So we'll do the the Bergen part of it, and uh, that's going to be with uh, canvas 319. Um, what all I'm also going to do is the, the the belt on it as well. So the uh, the belt is going to be canvas 319. It's actually canvas 314. Can't read my own writing, but uh, we've actually already used this. If you've uh, used it for your um, helmet covers. Um, but uh, 314 this is what I'm going to use for um, the rucksack and the uh, the belts as you're painting just to say keep an eye on your brush as well because um, I've just been changing the water and changing the paint it did it did go slightly a bit skew with but so um, if you just uh, uh, water it or just stick it on it under your tongue and, and just reshape and the, uh, uh, the the brush to it to its appoints so like that just keep an eye on that otherwise it'll start to spray off okay so um, we'll start on the the Bergen and, and to be honest I said was to, to give a little bit of depth to the actual vegetation at the top just just paint over it uh, we'll, we'll cover that later on so we're going to do the your, your Bergen on the back and also sort of the uh, the belt here as well so the um, on there and then we'll just look at those areas in a minute so it's the belt belt and bergen and uh, the straps as well if you haven't already painted them as part of the chess rig so once you've uh, finished with your canvas uh, your belt should be complete and so, and then onto the rucksack the, the bergen like i said if you've got uh, vegetation on the top just uh, you can paint over it it's just, it just gives it a bit of extra depth and what we'll go on to now is the um, 
Right, actually, we'll finish up on the webbing at first, so we'll uh, carry on with the, uh, the 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 belt carrier. And for the belt carrier, it's I'll be look using um, le leather brown. Surprisingly, some of the MVA um, equipment was actually um, leather. So uh, we'll uh, go on to the, the the shovel um, holder here. Okay, so like I said, we're going to uh, do the spade carrier, um, and it's in leather brown. So um, I wasn't 100% sure on that. But like with most things, if, you, if you're not 100% sure, um, either Google it or look in one of your reference books, and you'll you'll find. Because I actually thought this was a canvas cover, but uh, no, it's uh, it's actually um, um, it's a um, a leather co cover. Um, so on here as well, you've got. Uh, You've got the, the straps that go across the top, and then you've got the bottom of it as well. So it's actually um, half of it is the actual holder itself, which sort of comes to that line, and then the top end of it is actually sort of the actual shovel itself. So that's what we'll do later on when I get get around to do the metallics. Okay, so uh, let's just uh, finish off that one. So uh, once you've done the bottom of the leather carrier in brown, um, that's what you should look at. So what I'll do now is actually, um, whilst we've got the browns out, I'll uh, do the wood wood for the AK-47 uh, and the handle of the actual sh uh, the uh, shovel itself. So my go-to for um, the furniture on the um, AK-47 or the wood elements, so it's the, the stock and the foregrip, um, I use this um, mahogany brown um, by again by Valero 846, uh, which gives a nice uh, brownie, uh, brownie color, uh, very rich color. Again, you can tone it down with a bit of uh, shading later on. Um, what I'm also going to do as well is the actual so um, um, the actual shovel. Again, you, it comes in various different colors. You know, wood does come in different colors. So, but I'm going to actually just going to use the same color on the on the, on the, uh, the shovel handle itself. So like I said, I'm going to use the mahogany brown. This is a, a nice rich brown color. Um, so I'm just going to use it on the on so the meta, uh, sorry on the wood part of the um, AK-47. So that would be the front stock there. Um, if you're not sure where uh, the metal parts are, again, use uh, use a magazine, uh, use something for reference because it's basically it's you're looking at this bit here, the underneath, and then the actual stock at the back. Certainly for this era uh, and sort of Vietnam era, so AK 47s, they were sort of had uh, wood furniture on as well, and then sort of um, we'll do the handle on here as well for the the shovel again on this side um exactly the same but when you go in here this is when i said when you right at the very beginning when you look at appreciation of your, your figures because sometimes you have this rifle slung across the chest and gives you very little room to uh, to move this is probably one of the things i i would have done right from the start is actually if that rifle was right across the chest was actually got in there with my brown and actually did that so again it's it, it's looking at where you want to start first which is not going to cause you a bit of grief later on so um, yeah so in there as well and down the bottom there we are so i've done the uh, the woodwork on the ak-47 um and also the the shovel as well now one thing i was to be mindful of as well sometimes the weapons uh, especially uh, uh, will have uh, a pistol grip and as you can see on here the the fist was around the pistol grip uh, unless you're, you know, sort of a, a, a bit of a sniper with your uh, your, your, paint, your, your, your paintbrush, you 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 are going to get it over over the um, over the hand and stuff like that. It's not a problem. It's just, it just got, let it dry and just uh, go back over it with a flesh colour. But uh, there we are. So um, that's the um, the woodwork and uh, front stock, pistol grip, and also the uh, the shovel. Okay, so um, that's the wood wood part of the 
rifle so we will go on to the uh, metal part of it now uh, again you might think it's an, a bit of an odd color to go for but um, um, I use uh, black grey um, again Valerio 862 uh, and uh, that just gives a, a nice uh, grey blackness to the uh, metalwork of the um, of, of the weapon which when we highlight it later on actually gives it a nice nice look well, uh, so what I will be doing on there is the actual sort of gas parts, the barrel, uh, magazine, uh, and the actual centre part of the, the the body itself. Uh, but also as well, what I um, what I've been doing as well is the top bit of the the actual shovel there as well. So that's going to be also uh, bl uh, black grey as well. And then if there's any other metallic areas, in fact, yes, there is. There's the uh, the actual belt buckle itself as well. I'll be doing that in the in the black grey. There we are. Right, back in a second. Yeah. So the areas I'm going to start on is the uh, on the black grey was uh, is the front of the rifle, the main body of the AK-47 magazine, and the top of the shovel. And then, if I'm very delicate, uh, the actual belt buckle of the the figure itself. Okay, so we've done the black brown. Uh, that's on the on the actual front of the weapon, the main body in its magazine, the the top of the shovel as well. Uh, and I've, as I was looking around, we've also done the belt buckle, and also any other black areas such as the top of the uh, the water bottle up here as well. Now, talking of the water bottle, one thing I have missed is the actual the the um, the canvas on here. So when we're doing the um, the chest rig in the green grey, uh, you can actually do th this area as well. So that's the green grey as well. Just leave these areas uh, grey at the moment because a, there is a, a, another colour to go into, which is uh, representative of the actual um, water bottles used at that time. Okay, so what we're in fact actually that's actually the next area that we we're going on to will be the, um, the footwear and also the uh, the actual water bottle itself. So that is um, US dark green. So um, as he says, yep, here we are, US dark green. So this will be going on the water bottle and the actual footwear. But before I uh, do anything, what I'm going to have to do is go and uh, change my water. As you can see, it's starting to be a, a little bit uh, yucky and uh, unusable. So just keep an eye on your water. And if it start going the same colour as that, uh, that's probably a good sign that you need to go and change your water. OK, so now I've changed the water. We'll go quickly into the, um, like I said, the, the, the footwear and the... Um, the actual water bottle itself. Now, there's two types of footwear you can have for these figures. Uh, one is sort of like the, 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 the um, as you can see on here, it's got um, like uh, daps on, the old fashioned daps. Um, but as I say, in, um, for long use in the actual jungle, they did rot away and fall away. And uh, they had uh, ended up with the, uh, was it the, the Ho Chi Minh sandals, as they were called. Uh, which were usually made out of tyres and very hard wearing, sort of like very flip flop lookies, look like he's on those. And um, with those, because they're made out of the, the, the rubber from tyres, I do use sort of the, uh, was it black grey? Um, um, in fact, no, it's the um, German black brown, actually. It's that one. That's the one I use, the German black brown. So it gives it a nice. Uh, uh, brownish darkish look for the actual sort of um, um, leather for the Ho Chi Minh sandals but on, on this occasion we'll be, be using sort of um, dark green uh, dark green 893 so using our brush again I'm just using the the showing what can be done with just the standard brush uh, so you know, so any new starters, they don't need to sort of go into these, um, uh, you know, buying all these expensive brushes straight away. Uh, a starter, a starter brush is a good place to start. Uh, <laughs> that sounds obvious, um, but they they don't last forever. So um, um, so just just be mindful of that. I'll, I'll tidy that up in a second. 
and then scan onto the onto the footwear. Just be mindful of uh, um, touching the skin and anything else on there as well. The actual bottom, the base is fine because as I say, I'm going to paint all over that later on, or, and I'll do a, a tutorial on how I base my my figures later on. Okay, so uh, once the uh, the boots have been done and the water bottle, what we'll do is we'll start on to next is the the actual uh, veg on the back of the uh, the burger or the vegetarian um, vegetation, and um, we'll start on that. Now, uh, one color I use for that is um, SS Cam Bright Green, which again Valerio M833, and it makes a quite a vibrant color on there. But uh, when we actually use the shade on it, it does that. Uh, tone it down slightly and uh, and if we get, get this effect if you can see on that one let's, let's just see. there we are it gets a nice effect once it's been dry brushed and everything else okay so um, on to the um, vegetation Just say, just be careful when you're going around the uh, on top of the burger that you don't cover paint the actual burger or the straps itself. What we're just trying to paint is the is the actual leaves of the actual um, vegetation that's putting me put on the top of it. And of course, just make sure that you don't paint over any uniform or um, or equipment. This one's a little bit watery, so uh, I might have to go over it, let it dry, and then go over it again. But you know, it's better to have it uh, too watery than too thick, where it actually hides all the detail. But if you take your time, you have a good result. Okay, so uh, once you've uh, completed that, it should uh, dry off quite nicely and give you a nice uh, vibrant green colour. So getting to the point where we've now done most of the, the, the main blo block colours, uh, so you could t take this time now just to go over anything that you've done. Um, if you have done it in a palette, like clockwise, you could uh, simply... Um, your paint still should be a little bit wet. Just have some water over it and go over to over it. Anything that you've uh, missed or needs uh, needs going over again. So that's that's more or less where we are. So the um, what I do now is I dry brush it with a, a an ivory color. So it's um, that's the next thing I do is, is actually dry lightly dry brush it just to catch all those edges, and then I go on to the shading bit. So uh, we'll um, just dig out my uh, ivory shade. In fact, is there a bit I've missed? Yes, there is. There's a bit I've missed under there, as you can see. So like I said, this is a good time to actually go and uh, check anything that you've missed and uh, redo it. Back in a second. So now I've done all the main um, main colours, the block colours, I would go on to the dry brush it now. So this is my go-to, it's uh, again Valerio model um, ivory 70918 and I use this for majority of dry brushing, thing, um, brushing things. Um, I usually dry brush before I put on the shade, uh, you'll probably see why in a minute and to say this is this is how I do things, it might not be your your way but to say it's, it's the way I like and it just just gives it, um, if I get it right, it just um, picks up all the little raised area on the figures. So when you shade it, it actually shade, saves you a job and shows where if you're going to um, layer the, um, the, the figures later on, where you can actually paint it. So give it a good shake. Put a, a blob on the, uh, on here. Now, this is where it's you got to get it right. So you got put enough, put enough on there, and then you've got to start taking it off. 
So you've got enough, you've got enough, put enough paint on there that actually will stay on the brush. And this one is actually a Citadel dry brush. Again, you, you can use any particular brush. Um, I've used makeup brushes before, or this, or this particular one is just that I've, again, I've, I've, I've had this for a long time, and it's um, um, fits my purpose as long as I can get all the paint off it. And let's just try it on my finger. See that? See, I just done that. That's still too much for what I want. So. Um, Because if you if you do paint if you put too much paint on it and when you go to dry brush it it it, it makes it a little bit messy. Uh, now that's a little bit better. Proof in the pudding is let's see what happens when I um, uh, dry brush it. So let's have a look. In fact, just before I forget, I'll just make sure everything is dry because I don't want to. In fact, now the at the top here it's still a little bit wet so I'll, I won't do that in a particular area but what I will do is around around the weapon area just to see if that's okay so in I just try and do it all in one way and try and catch all the raised areas so if you should see around where the change lever is on the AK-47 the magazine is starting to pick up a little bit of um, raised area that's what we want we don't want it quite heavy you just want it to, to, to catch some of the air at the actual areas right, let's do the, uh, the the front Oops. okay so that's starting a little bit more than I would normally want on the knee so um, it, it's fine it's fine it's fine if it's too much as I said it's just just paint over it and just start again. Now with the helmet, I just want it to just pick up the the raised bits. There's a couple of um, studs and raised area, the band on the helmet as well. This is what just what I wanted. So when you're doing over the rucksack, as you can see, it's starting to pick up um, some of the. Um, the actual straps and everything else yeah. might be a little a wee bit too much on here still at the moment but that's fine just, I just do it lightly still yes yeah, picking up it's picking up all the bits I want let's do it over the front now over the hands fingers there we are make sure we do over the footwear as well pick up all the raised areas so all the belt buckles the ridges in the uniform that's all picked up brilliant shoelaces on the boots Let's see if this is dry. It's still a little bit tacky, but we'll, we'll give it a once over anyway. Yes, it's, 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 it's his sticking onto the uh, the leaves, which is good. Make sure the uh, chest rig's done and those on the arms. Just give it just a, gives a little bit of wear and tear on the uniform. Um, let's see if this picture get this picture a bit, a bit, a bit better. There we are. If you can see what I mean, it's just starting to pick up all the raised areas on there. So on the bit on the knee there, a choice is yours. You can either sort of repaint it or go with it. I, I'll probably go with it because it looks like the chap's been kneeling down, as you probably would. It gives the uniform uh, rather than just off the shelf look. It just gives it a little bit of a. Uh, it, it's worn and it's caught all the mud and dust and dirt and everything as as they go across. Right. So that's where the, the so sort of like the dry brushing st um, finishes. Um, 
Let's draw the boat back there a little bit. Just to pick up those straps on the uh, saddle cover. Lovely. Right. So, um, let's on to the washes. Now, I use a variety of uh, washes. So, all the green I use uh, is the Athonian camo shade. All of flesh, I'll use the uh, Reichland flesh wash, and then all metal uh, areas and weapons, I use the uh, uh, the non oil, and then um, anything else that um, I've got or just not covered, um, I use the Agrax Earth Shade. So um, let's um, go and dig these out. Just let, I'll just let that uh, dry brushing dry a little bit more, and then uh, let's see how it goes. So as I said, um, I now go into the, the shade um, elements of painting these figures. So um, all greens, I'll be using the um, Arthonian camera shade. Um, for all my uh, flesh, I'll be using the uh, Reichland uh, flesh shade. Um, and then for metallic uh, and the weapons, I'll be using none oil. And then anything else that uh, haven't not covered by the other three, I'll be using the Agrax. Now, one thing with these is that um, sometimes these uh, my, you know, these have been a bit hit and miss for me, and so I make sure that um, not only do I give them a good stir with an old brush just to make sure that um, any deb uh, any of the mater uh, paint material in in, that, in the bottom that's separated is actually mixed back into it, but also if you can hear it, there's uh, ball bearings in these as well, so it gives it a good mix. Um, I I don't do it straight out of the pot. I like to put it into the, into here and just sort of like a, do a 50% um, 50, 50 water, 50% 50 uh, uh, shade just to try and water it down. Um, it's when I'm actually putting on the figures as well, just, just to make sure it doesn't pool. And uh, if it does pool, just uh, use, use the brush just to redirect uh, where you want the paint to go. Um, and yeah, so it's, um, this is for me to say it's a bit of a hit and miss, uh, and but I've just met, I make sure that uh, one thing I can do is just make sure these are nicely mixed before we start. They've had a good uh, shake, um, and all the colours as mixed up as possible. So um, right, okay. So uh, let's start with um, the green. Okay, so. Um, I've put the agraf shaded to here and it's um, three paint and three water so hopefully it'll um, it won't uh, dry uh, shiny but if it does not a problem because we said we just put a uh, the, the final the final version of this is actually sprayed with a mat so that actually calms it down so let's go over with um, all the green elements with the agrax of agrax no athonian camo shade Just make sure we cover the um, vegetation at the back. If it goes over other areas, not to worry. So it just adds a little bit more shade to those particular areas. Right, okay, I put a bit too much on there like that, like I said. So if it uh, does start to pool, just uh, take a little bit of access off your um, off your brush, and then sort of redirect it to where it's actually needed. Just make sure you get in all those nooks and crannies. Oh, and because we're Footwear is green. Just make sure you do the footwear as well. Okay, a little bit. Need to put a bit, bit more water and a bit more ag ag camo shade in there. Just drain off the. Uh, I've gone over the skin a little bit, but that should be okay. I'm not worried about the the base yet because I said I'll um, 
I'll, I'll paint that over. Let's go with the rucksack as one at the back. Chest rig, belt, and everything else on the hat looks. Yeah, so there we are. So that's this couple of areas it hasn't gone in yet. So just let's just make sure it goes in there. Okay, dry off the excess. Yep. Right. So I think that's enough of the uh, Agrac Athonian camo shade. I will get it right eventually. Right. Now let's let this figure dry and then we'll move on to the um, skin, the Reichland Flesh shade. Right, same again. Um, got the um, Reichland Flesh shade. Uh, give it a good shake and also uh, put a, a, a brush around it just make sure it um, all those solids that has gone down to the bottom of it have all been mixed up so hopefully it's not going to dry um, shiny so I'm going to just use a little bit of a smaller brush on this one uh, just to cover the the flesh areas so we're looking at is the face the neck and arms and in this case it's just around the uh, ankles area as well so let's get enough that we need um, on the brush, but uh, not so much that it actually drowns the figure. So you want to get in all those nooks and crannies where all the fingers bend and everything else. You, know, so you don't want it. You don't want it swimming in shade. You just want it uh, just to fill all those. In this case, on the face, it would be the mouth, the ears, around the neck. So I'll just give it a bit more depth. I think that's the word we're looking for. Depth underneath the arm. Don't forget the ankles. If it dries and it doesn't look like there's a, you've, you've watered it down too much, then you know you can go over again, but just be careful of what you do. Sometimes it doesn't look like you've put too much on, but when it dries, it's actually dried just how it should do. There we are. So that's the um, that's all the fleshy bits done. And then now what I'm going to move on to, it'll be just fi the final, it'll be the all the metal metal work. And so I'm just going to say use none of the oil for that one. And just make sure it's given a good shake. So I'll use the none oil because it gives a quite a nice rusty look uh, or oiled, oiled look of, of the, and that will be for the, um, Bit of water in, got dabs of water, Let's put the nun oil in. Again, if you want it to flow better, you can use uh, something called Lamian, uh, in fact, what is it? Um, oh, I have got some here. It's, it's like Lamian mix or something that makes it uh, the shades a little bit more um, water. Um, uh, water so looser so they fill, they fill in all the gaps and it doesn't dry as quick right so let's go over the weapons over the stock over the magazine let's make sure we do the um, Shovel. I'll just quickly, just do the belt buckle as well. Underneath where I left it, but didn't do it before. 
and there we are. So at the moment, that's that's how it that's how it is. So let's wait until it dries off, and then uh, let's see what we're left with. Uh, and then sort of um, onto shading. So um, finish the shading, I mean layering. So the ones, the only things that I do is probably the go over the fingers, the face, put some teeth in. If you can see the teeth, I, I'm not very good at eyes, so it's a, um, I can have a go, but um, I sometimes just just leave it as is, as long as you can, you know. Uh, but there we are. That's um, let's see how. That drags with all the shades on it, and uh, that must be the next step. Early there. So I've waited to uh, for all the um, oils, oils, uh, shades to dry, and uh, and that, and then just done a quick base of uh, Moonfang, Moonfang Brown over the um, the base, and uh, here we are. So. This is sort of like my final, what I would be quite happy with as a, as a figure. Um, my next thing I could do is to say, is go on, go on to do the face and stuff like that. Um, and use a bit of, uh, as it screamer pink for the uh, mouth tongue area. Uh, and then for the eyes, just a little bit of uh, white for the background uh, and then uh, black. Uh, black for the for the pupils, um, pretty much like I done on the, on the, on this one. If you have a look at this one. There we are. So, um, in fact, what I'll do is actually let's have a go. Let's have a go at doing it in front of the uh, for the camera. So, as you can see, I'm pretty. I'm happy with that one, and uh, what I would do is just say a dry brush over the over the base, and then so if I've got um, bushes and everything else that will go on there, uh, and but before I put the bushes on, I would probably put a matte spray over these these as well. So th these ones, this one has been matte sprayed, uh, and so as I say, it's uh, just taken where some of the shading had gone a bit uh, glossy has calmed it down and I was lucky on this one where the it's not it's not so uh, glossy um, yeah so um, so let's now um, well let's have a go at the doing the faces just to finish just to finish it off I'll just do the mouth do the sort of like tongue area and and just do what I would normally do for the face and it, it's sort of like highlight the cheeks and highlight the nose and just top of the around the mouth and area so let's put it back on uh, the old base and what I will do is go back to to the original color which is the USA tan earth this is just to do the um, the actual face itself. Just make sure I give it a good shake. And yeah, we'll we'll carry on using this the Citadel Citadel starter brush. What I would probably do is use uh, something that's a bit more finer. Here we are. We've got the. Uh, I wanted just a little bit watery not not too thick and then what um, the areas that I would be highlighting is just the sort of like the the top of the fingers then the knuckles uh, just a bit of the highlight there just where it's it, it's raised slightly and on here just ever so gently, just the, the where the fingers are, just to give them a little bit of especially where we want about where, where their script around the actual pistol grip. So just a little bit there, dot 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 on top of the, the fingers. And just highlight there where it's a little bit and you where, where I've dry brushed it actually gives you a bit of a guide where it's the best place where it's um, 
where, where I would highlight it. You can go mad and actually highlight everything. So all you need to do is just use the original colors that you've gone and, uh, and gone over the gone over the raised areas. Now, let's do the face. So this is for me. I normally do a bit of nose. Cheek. Cheek. Top of the lip. Bottom of the lip and just a touch on the ears just to just highlight where the sun's probably catching it or don't need to go mad, just just there we go. Let's see if it's it'll zoom in. Come on. There we are. So it's just all I've done is just highlighted some of the, the the areas. So tip of the nose, tip of the cheek, just on the top of the mouth and the chin. Just emphasizes the the, the muscles and groups in that area. Right. So this is where it could go all wrong with the I just want a tiny tiniest bit of screamer pink. And that just to do a little bit of, a, of the mouth area. Right, just put the tiniest bit on, uh, on a paintbrush. And what I want to do is just right at the back of the throat. Whoop. So I've just quickly done the back of the mouth and just, just the tiniest bit of, of a screw of pink in the back. And then let's see if I can do the teeth. Again, I just want just a little bit just to... There we are. See what I've done there? So. There we are. That's just enough that you need just to emphasise the, the the mouth and the teeth. That's you know that's unless you go mad and um, you know your character figures and everything else. But for your rank and file, that's probably about as far as I would go. I'd be quite happy with that. You know, this one's actually an NCO, so it, it's um, <clears throat> so um, I would finally I would um, spray him in a in a matte matte finish. Uh, just be careful, you know, matte sprays are great. Just make sure you do it in a well ventilated room, plenty of distance away from it and don't don't cover it in spray. Otherwise, it just gets it just goes horrible. Um, and sort of, yeah, so th there we are. So that is my my finished figure. That's uh, how I would paint my North Vietnam, um, North Vietnamese army soldiers. This one's an NCO. Um, if you're do the way I do it, if you do if you're batch painting it, it's actually quite easily that you do one color, go on to the next filler, do the one color, and everything else. So if you follow it in order, what I've just done, that should help you uh, to get tons of rank and file done. Um, hopefully, that is uh, that's going to be some help for you. This is probably, this is my first um, how I paint things, and so hopefully I'm going to, to do some more. Um, so don't forget to uh, like and subscribe and uh, if you've got any comments um, or suggestions on how you would probably do things a little bit better or any suggestions how I can improve these figures um, please leave them uh, your comments below but um, thank you thank you for uh, staying the journey and uh, hopefully um, you know all your figures will um, soon all be done and that plastic crack mountain will be uh, reduced but um, I hope that's been to some use for you. So you lot, take care, and I will catch up with you very soon. Bye for now. Squad morale restored.